Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, you have a telephone call at the front desk. Ha! I've practiced that voice for hours to be able to get Pee Wee Herman's voice. Um, so in the last video, first of all, thank you guys very much for um, all your all your conversations. Um, just making notes here as I'm I'm thinking about our script. <clears throat> thank you guys very much for the conversation. Um, a couple of you guys apologize for having too long of of paragraphs for us to read do not that is what this channel is here for this channel isn't here for you guys to be my little echo chamber like keep it you're so great John. and if anybody argues then everybody attacks them like hate or hate like that's not what this is for this comment section is for you guys to write the longest stories that you want to write successes failures funny anecdotes whatever you want and for the other guys to read it and talk to each other to, so we can all figure this thing out, so we can all learn together, and we can all improve our family life and our small farms. And uh, so a question on the last video was, what about organic matter? Oh, ho, ho. good question. So if I pull up the results from 2022, the organic matter is 2.2%. If I pull up the results from 2014, the results are 1.9%. And so we moved about three tenths of a percent in nine years. Let's just round it up to 10 years and say, so we moved three hundredths of a percent every year, 0 0.03. And to me, at first you're like, ah, that is not very, that's gonna take a lifetime to change 1%. Like, yeah, yeah. Because to change 1% organic matter in your soil, you are talking massive amounts of product, massive amounts of growing plants to create tons of dry matter, of, of stover, of residue and roots. And so the University of Penn, uh, Penn State here, I will I'll get a link to this article in the, in the description here because it's a fun little read. But uh, I grabbed some numbers from them just to kind of help explain the, the scale you need to be at to make 1% organic matter uh, in a year, in a year, um, to, to give it some perspective. And so organic matter is basically plants growing. They're going to create residue and they're going to have a root system. And by the photosynthesis, that's how we're going to add organic matter. 40% uh, of our stover or residue and root system becomes carbon, roughly. Um, you got 2 million pounds in the top 6 inches, so that means 20,000 pounds of soil. That, uh, that converts over to 1%. Uh, for every 1% of organic matter, you end up at 11,600 pounds of carbon. And so 200 bushel corn is going to generate about 4,500 pounds of carbon. And so to move 1% organic matter, you need almost 600 bushel corn in a year. Like, like I don't know about you, but I mean, I, you know, 600 bushel corn, like, uh, it's another bad year. But um, yeah, that, that's a tremendous amount. Uh, but they did have in here that if you threw a winter rye, into the corn and it made this much growth that you could add another couple thousand pounds of carbon that year well that's going to speed you up a lot that that's really going to and that shows what the value of cover crops can really do because one percent organic matter is going to help us hold up to twenty five thousand gallons of more water it's going to give us 10 to 30 pounds of nitrogen better so on my on this field this field compared to where it was We've gained 8,000 gallons of holding capacity on water. We've gained three to 10 pounds of nitrogen credits, and we've gained a few P and K and sulfur credits along the way as well. Um, the pH has maintained, which I find very fascinating because on the rest of our land, we are putting on about a well, we'll do several ton of lime every several years. You know, you put on three ton and you'll you kind of monitor it and in three, four, five years, you do another three ton of lime. And so this field, I don't, I, the last time this field would have had lime would have been like 
uh, 2012-13 kind of time frame. And so I, I find that uh, very interesting that the pH is maintaining. And so it kind of makes what Dr. Elaine Ingham was saying about pH kind of coming true. And so, um, yeah, I, I find it. So, but um, some of the other benefits of this field. So this field compared to itself, you know, 2014 to 2022, water in East Central Minnesota is a big deal. Our water is high in phosphorus. Is it from the farmers? Not all of it. Is there a few old habits that we used to do as farmers that we probably shouldn't be doing today? Absolutely. Uh, but I think a lot of it comes from woods and swamps. Not all of it comes from us farmers, but we're the ones in the limelight, so we're the ones to be blamed. Uh, buffer laws are only going to get worse up here. Uh, so water's a big deal. So on this farm, yep, 2014 to today, the field can hold 8,000 gallons more water, but the amount of water getting into the profile is just, it's not even a graph, it's just a straight vertical line as percent of improvement. Uh, because in 2014, you have washouts, you have dirty water leaving the farm. In 2022, I could dang near plow the ditches in and uh, not really care because there isn't, the water isn't coming off the hills as much even on these four and five inch events, water's leaving the field, don't get me wrong, um, but it's not leaving like it used to. Uh, when I was a kid, we used a tube after a big rain event across the field, and now, after a four inch rain event, you're like, hmm, well, look at there, let's go get some toothpicks and, and race them, because that's about how the water's leaving the farm. And the cool thing is, is the water leaving the farm is clean, it's clean. Um, it's not muddy brown um, like it used to be. It, it's visually clear, so to speak, and we hope that by being cleaner that there's less phosphorus leaving the field with it. Uh, so that, that's kind of a big deal to me. Uh, but the, the amount of water infiltrating, only that has to be helping us substantially. So we have no more wind or water erosion and, and water getting into the profile it has gone way up. Uh, the other thing is compaction. We no longer have to worry about compaction on this field um, because it, it's starting to build health, it's starting to build structure. We got all that armor, all that residue on the surface becomes armor so when you drive an implement across the field that it acts as a sponge or a protector. It, it distributes that load out kind of like when you build a highway and you use that blanket, that, that uh, black fabric, and it, it just helps spread the load somewhat. It don't look like it, but I had a great example in 2019. We had a turkey litter pile in this field, and it was straight off the headland. So you went from the pile, you drove across the headland, then made your trips up and down the field. And I had the video where I showed with a tile probe, like you could, you could see where the, the corn residue got ran down and, and kind of beat up with the wheel tracks, but you could not find that with the tile probe. It, it did not compact that soil. And you could do it on your own soil. Go grab some of your bare dead dirt and, and get a little bit damp and, and make a mud ball out of it. And then go grab a corn root ball, get a little damp and squeeze all that corn root ball and see, did, did you, you know, how did it react? And, and look at the two differences because them, even though they're dead roots, picture you're squeezing that soil and you got all these dead root channels in there. And uh, as you compact that soil from traffic, that soil can kind of crumble and fall into them pore spaces. And them roots kind of act as a sponge. And, and so you'd see it on your own stuff. If, if you try it on your own farm. The timeliness now. The other cool thing is the timeliness on this field. Never once on this field have I looked out there and been like, man, I should be planting corn today, but that soil is too cold and too wet. That is a big myth. Too cold and too wet is a huge myth. And I've busted it many years now every spring on camera. And uh, there's been many times I've been sitting at the headland waiting to plant because you're looking at the forecast and you're like, I'm not brave enough. Um, and so timeliness, we, we had a, a four inch rain event a couple years ago, it was a wet spring, 
And then we had a four inch rain event. A couple days later, I am spraying soybeans because it is time to spray soybeans and we have all this water on top of the soil or in the soil to help activate our chemicals. What perfect timing could there be? So I'm out there spraying soybeans a couple days after a four inch rain event. The tires are all wet and shiny and, and neighbors are driving by and my phone is just lighting up with text messages as to what on earth are you doing? You're in a two wheel drive 4640 tractor pulling a sprayer. We just had all this rain. I'm like, yeah, it just it's just going. So then of course it's, you have such light soil. <sighs> no. This soil is alive and functioning, and uh, I replaced. I, 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 our infiltration rate is enough that it would take a heck of a tile system to replace the infiltration rate that I have. Um, except that's a whole different because again, there's nowhere for the tile to go. Blah 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 blah. Um, so we we're we're doing better than a really good tile system on our farm at at what's tile cost a thousand twelve hundred an acre. Excuse me, I can see if you have dead non-functioning dirt, grid pattern tiling pays for itself. You bet. But I didn't even pay that $1,200 an acre, and we already got better water management uh, by, by not spending that money, by, by saving money on other areas. And so that timeliness, well then a couple weeks later, a week or, I think it was like a week or two later at the most, we had a five inch rain event, and that's when I started side dressing corn. And you're just, and, and again, the neighbors are like, how are you doing this? You know, when you get stuck, let us know. We'll come out with the quad track and pull you out. And, and I laughed and I'm like, I, I, I won't get stuck. Like there, there is no more stuck. I, I've, I've shown you guys many videos of, hey, this is where I used to mud bog with the three wheeler. I haven't even put the four ATV and four wheel drive in three years. Or this is a spot that dad and I used to get stuck all the time. Or, or this is where I got buried one time as a kid and blah, blah, blah. And now look at like I'm, there's water here. The combine is on top of the soil and I can take a trowel and dig in that soil and it's not compacted. And so it's just full of water. It's just saturated. And so it's waiting for that water to percolate down but we're still able to move across the field. And that's a very big deal to us farmers is timeliness of being able to get out to the farm and stuff. And so this field, it's really, really, there's, I have some questions as to what things are going on. Like how is that pH going? What more can I do? How can I fast forward to organic matter? Um, and things like that. Um, but overall, this field's really kind of coming alive quote unquote. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to leave that right there. And uh, you guys do a fantastic job of the comments again. I try to get to everybody. I always thumbs up. That way I know I've read your comment and I do read them. I don't always have anything to say back. Um, but I, I do read them and I give them the thumbs up. That way I know I've read them. If, if I miss your comment or something, let me know because um, that's kind of important to me. But uh, on that note, I will, uh, I think I will leave you guys there because some of these topics we got more conversation later on. But thank you very much.